The following report contains some disturbing images. From the chaos of Syria's civil war comes a possible silver lining, a chance to rid the world of one of the most deadly arsenals of chemical weapons. Syria's forces control a staggeringly large amount of chemical weapons, including hundreds of tons of sarin and VX nerve gas, as well as mustard gas. It can be delivered by rockets, artillery or dropped from the air. And last month, it was by someone. The West believes the Assad regime carried out this mass chemical attack in the suburbs of Damascus. The regime says it was the rebels. Either way, there's now an urgent need to secure and destroy the weapons that did this. Yesterday, the U.S. made an offhand suggestion that's fast becoming a plan. He could turn over every single bit of his chemical weapons to the international community in the next week. Turn it over, all of it, uh, without delay and allow a full and total accounting for that. Uh, but he isn't about to do it, and it, it can't be done, obviously. Hunting down banned chemical weapons in a secretive Middle Eastern dictatorship is not easy. In Iraq, under Saddam Hussein, UN inspectors were forced to play a cat-and-mouse game for years in the 1990s, trying to discover hidden sites the regime did not want them to find. The Syrian plan will depend on complete disclosure. There's going to be, need to be some sort of ceasefire, and we're going to need to think laterally how we're going to do it. To destroy the weapons in situ in a war zone is probably not going to be the best way of doing it. To stockpile, as we did in Iraq, might be a way. Potentially move the weapons out of the country and destroy them there also might be a way. I think it is all technically possible. Syria's civil war is still raging. So securing, transporting and eventually destroying its lethal poison gases will be undertaken under the most difficult and dangerous of conditions. Frank Gardner, BBC News.